Welcome, guys. Um, in this short video, what we're going to be looking at is dividends per share. Where should this video be in terms of your learning? Uh, well, you should have already completed lecture five, uh, and this video needs to be watched before you start with lecture six. In this video, we will only be coming, only be covering dividends per share. So just a little bit about the background, stuff that you need to know before you start tackling dividends per share. So we have a thing called basic earnings per share and basic earnings per share is a ratio or a fraction that we calculate. It is used to compare different types of companies and as well to compare a company across different years. In order to prepare our dividends per share, we need to calculate the numerator or the top number called earnings. When calculating earnings, we start off with profit after tax. Remember, we have to take off tax. The reason why we take off tax is because the owners of a company cannot uh, hold the tax. Tax belongs to the government and therefore it has to be after tax. We also want to use profit because we're looking for earnings or income that is generated from the normal course of business, right? So we want to look at the selling and the buying, the normal course of business that an entity might engage in. We're then going to reduce our profit after tax by any preference dividends. Now, remember the rules with cumulative preference dividends, they're always taken into account. And regardless of whether there's an amount that's in arrears or not, we only take into account the current year. With non-cumulative preference dividends, we must only take into account amounts that have been declared. Note, they don't need to be paid already. They just need to be declared. After we reduce our profit by our fixed portion of preference dividends, we arrive at a number that we term profit attributable to ordinary shareholders. This is technically the profit that is owned or belongs to the ordinary shareholders only. Just a point of um, contention, why don't we remove any debenture interest? Well, debenture interest is already removed in the profit after tax. Remember, it is interest, whereas preference dividends, which is an equity amount, uh, an equity payment, is not removed from profit after tax. So that's why we only remove preference dividends and not debenture interest. So now we've calculated our earnings. How about we start calculating what's called the WANO? So the WANO is the weighted average number of ordinary shares. When we looked at WANO, we said that there are two different types um, of, of share issues that we can have. We can have sh what we call share issues for value, which is where we give someone a share and they give us some sort of money, a cash or some sort of asset in return. Remember we said that we only start accounting or weighting these specific uh, share issues from the time that the consideration is receivable. So we must have either a debit bank or a debit debtor before we can start recording it. We don't start, uh, or before we can start waiting, we don't start waiting it um, at the time of issue or at the time of allotment or at the time of application or at the time of prospectus. No, we only start waiting a four issue, uh, uh, a four issue uh, when the share has been uh, sent and an amount is receivable. So either it's debit bank or a debtor. With regard to no issues for no value, that is where specific shares are given away for free. We, at in our course this year, we're only going to be covering capitalization issues. So we're not going to be looking at share splits or share consolidations. With capitalization issues, what basically happens is the shareholders, the ordinary shareholders, are given a bonus share, what we call a bonus share. So basically we tell them, if you're holding 10 shares, we're gonna give you an additional one um, in this year. So with capitalization issues, we don't do any waiting in the current year, yet we restate the prior year, which is obviously the total opposite of what we would do when we have a four issue 
um, situation. Uh, with a four issue situation, we issue it in the year that it's been issued, so the current year, and we don't restate any prior years. Okay, so that's basic earnings per share. Let's have a look at diluted earnings per share. So with diluted earnings per share, we've got two types of dilutive instruments that we're going to be considering. The first is convertible debentures, debentures and the next is convertible preference shares. So let's first look at convertible debentures. When we're dealing with convertible debentures, we need to take the basic earnings that we calculated when we're calculating basic earnings per share, and we need to reduce it by the after-tax interest. Why is it after-tax? Remember, because when the debenture interest no more exists, the entity cannot claim that tax rebate that relates to that uh, um, uh, that interest. So as a result, we will only be receiving or gaining the interest after we take out that potential claim uh, that we would have made to SARS. So that's why it's the after-tax effect of uh, interest. We would add that back. Remember the mechanics, we're adding it back because we, we're assuming that these debentures no more exist. Instead, ordinary shares are in existence. With convertible debentures, when we're calculating our WANOS, we do not need to um, restate any amount, right? So we're not restating any amounts. Instead, we'll only weight it. And when do we weight it? In two scenarios. If it's been issued in one of the years under review, or if it's been converted in one of the years under review. So it's only weighted in those two scenarios, if it's been issued or, weight or converted. Um, so that's convertible debentures. Let's quickly look at convertible preference shares. So when we have convertible preference shares and we're attempting to calculate our diluted earnings per share, we start again with the basic earnings, which we calculated when we are doing basic earnings per share. And we'd add back the preference dividends. Remember, we'd just add back the preference dividends and not the after-tax effect. So we don't want after-tax effect of preference dividends. And that is because dividends and preference dividends is an equity item and is not subjected to normal corporate tax. So that's, that would be our calculation for the diluted earnings. When we look at the diluted WANOs, um, again, we will only weight the WANOS if the convertible preference shares were either issued or converted in the current year or the prior year under review, and we'll never restate these amounts. So restatement generally does not happen when we're doing diluted earnings per share. That, in our course, that is reserved for when we're doing basic earnings per share. So that's a brief summary of where we are so far. Now, we're going to look at a thing called dividends per share. Now, dividends per share is a very simple measure. All we're looking at when we're doing dividends per share is we're asking ourselves how much dividends is each shareholder getting? So how much dividends is each share getting? A basic calculation for that would be the dividends paid, so the total dividends paid, divided by the actual number of shares at the date of which the dividends was paid. Again, just like earnings per share, we will receive an amount that must be expressed in rands per share. The reason why we do it in rands per share again is so that it has equal prominence to other figures on the financial statements. Dividends per share is not required by IAS 33, which is the earnings per share standard. Instead, we, it, it goes all the way back to IAS 1, which talks about the presentation of financial statements. And there we read that we must indicate how much ordinary shareholders are getting in dividends. So therefore, we have to present dividends per share. With regard to who needs to present dividends per share, well, unlike earnings per share, everyone that wants to apply IFRS or the financial, international financial reporting standards needs to present dividends per share. So it's not... Um, Unlike when we're dealing with earnings per share, we don't need to exclude those people that are unlisted uh, or those people that are unlisted and don't choose to, to present it. This must be presented by all companies. So what are any particular things that we need to be aware of when calculating dividends per share? 
The first is there isn't a Wannos calculation. So we're not going to do a Wannos calculation for dividends per share. We want to try and use the actual number of shares in issue. But remember that we also want to ensure comparability from one year to the next. So we're going to get to that just now. So in our um, calculation of our awareness, you'll remember that the first column that we have out of our three columns is what we call the actual column. Remember, we've got actual column in the first column. Then the next is the current year, awareness. The, and then the final one is the prior year, awareness. So when we calculating dividends per share, we're going to look at that actual column and try and extract the number of shares that were actually an issue to calculate dividends per share. Now, back to our point on comparability. When we are attempting to compare um, dividends per share from one year to the next, and there's been a capitalization issue, that would mean that if we don't adjust the prior year for the capitalization issue, we are in fact assuming that we received new capital or new shares were, uh, uh, were, were issued and money was received in the current year. But that doesn't make sense. Remember, the understanding behind a capitalization issue and why we restate the prior year is because the capital that relates to the bonus share, the additional share, is in, in fact received when the original share was issued and the, and the money was received, the capital was received for the original share. So we, and that is the reason why we restate uh, the prior number of WANOs when you're doing basic earnings per share. That reasoning remains. What we are in fact saying is that if there was a capitalization issue, we need to adjust the prior year actual number so that when we calculate dividends per share, we take into account the capitalization issue in the prior year numbers too. Okay, so that's our short video. Thank you for watching and come back next time.